Hello, this is Giant Tank 1400 here, and this is my top 100 of works of animation number 20 through 1. Yes, finally to the top 20. And uh, really, without further ado, let's get on with it. My number 20 is Princess Monioke. Now, this movie is an anime, and it is beautifully animated all throughout the entire movie. Not only that, but the, the plot of the story was really uh, interesting to me. And that's basically you have these uh, two women that are like competing, uh, um, fighting against each other for like the forest. One's like a, a woman that was raised by a spirit wolf or whatever, and the other uh, just wants to cut down the entire forest. And then you got this guy who's kind of like in the middle, kind of both of them like, I believe. I only seen the movie once, and I'm sure if I seen it again, this would actually probably be in my top 10. Or at least like top 15 or something. Uh, that being said, I, I really did enjoy this movie overall. And um, if you want to see something that has a really good story and plot and some, some pretty good character development on, on another wolf, wolf girl, if I believe. And, uh, and the whole like scene is very well animated, like the whole movie is. So that's my number 20, Princess Monioke. My number 19 is Yu Yu Hakusho. Now, I remember watching this in probably the early 2000s or whenever it was on like Toonami. And it was just, it's, it's probably like the darkest I will get in like a TV show. That and Princess Monoyoke is actually pretty dark too. And and, and really, like I, I kind of look at it now and I'm kind of like, well, I actually watched it. That, that, that was kind of pretty dark for my taste. However, the fighting was interesting kind of you got to see Yusuke grow you basically got to see a character who was he was definitely good and he was definitely like um he wasn't pure of heart or anything but he was definitely like uh, a good like moral character yet he was definitely kind of on the gray side he was definitely did the other side of the fence a lot too so you got to see a character like, like that grow and, and of course there was uh um Kubaru and uh, I can't remember their names, but uh, he he was a really fun character. The characters are really good, and it's just that classic like anime. Um, the show is so and uh, sort of the same style, um, if you will, to Dragon Ball Z, except it is darker, and uh, and some of the powers are very more unique. So it's it's more strategic, if you will. So uh, that's my number nineteen, Yu Yu Hakusho. My number 18 is Wolverine and the X-Men. Now, this show reminded me of X-Men Evolution, which was earlier in the, or earlier on the list as well. It was my introduction to Marvel, but this one like took like a little bit darker scene, a little more grown-up scene to it. And to me the plot was like better overall. It only lasted two seasons, unfortunately. And they had like a kind of really good plot going there with um with Apopolix actually um no it actually only lasted I believe one season and the next season was gonna revolve around Apopolis kind of taking over and it revolved around like this time travel and them altering timelines and stuff and Wolverine was in charge because Professor X was in a coma but he was communicating them with the future it's just a really interesting show in all together and it was this um. So a lot of like your favorite characters are like from uh, from X Men Evolution are there, but they 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 are different in this a little bit, but it, they're they're still very similar, and they took things from like some alternate universes, like um, for example Nightcrawler and Wolver and Wanda, um, Scarlet Witch actually uh, heavily implied that they're going to get together, which and and it probably have a kid because uh, in a different universe that actually does happen. So. Um, Definitely an interesting show. That is my number 18, Wolverine and the X-Men. My number 17 is Samurai Jack. Now, I didn't see the new Samurai Jack. I really actually, it's on my to-do list to watch. And I'm not, sh I can't remember if I watched like all the old episodes um, of Samurai Jack. I've seen like probably most of them, but it's been a while. It's one of those shows that's on my list to kind of re-watch eventually. Just like a lot of these shows and movies on this list. However, that being said, it was always fun to see um, Jack. Really, he he's just like a such like a powerful character in terms of his swordmanship and everything. And you kind of got to see how he got that way. 
and and like the trials he's going through how he's how he just has to feed him on and he's like a man out of time and stuff like that and he's and it's only his sword that can defeat him on it's just such a great show it has such a simple concept and but and it's it's done episodically which is uh which is okay it's actually done great because like i the the basically kind of the plot is that samurai jack has to overcome something that Amon thrown in his face and he ends up beating it at the end and then you kind of see him walk away but he struggles throughout and he learns he grows more and more as a warrior throughout the show so um that's just uh one i have to like re-watch and, and then like watch the uh, new series which ended um apparently no spoilers on that please anyway so that's my number what are we on 17 samurai jack my number 16 is kung fu panda um the first one i've never seen the third one and i believe the second one was like further down on my list the first one really takes poe he is an extremely like bad kung fu warrior um he wants to be he's like basically a wannabe and basically you get to see him kind of grow shifu actually trains him and shifu actually grows really a lot as a character through um through paul and and you kind of see their progression and i really like how they use like Poe's training with shen fu and that's how he kind of defeated um tai long yeah i, I believe that's his name it, it was just really well done the art was really well done like the, the animation the uh, the animation of the uh, of kung fu panda the uh, fighting choreography was well done i mean that can always be approved of course however it was it was it was really good to see i mean i wish i would have seen more of the uh furious five that really weren't in they had like one big fight scene and that was it um that being said uh poe defeating tai long at the end was was um kind of epic their whole fight <laughs> fight scene trying to get the scroll um of the dragon warrior and stuff great movie and that's um so that's my number 16 kung fu panda my number 15 is one i try to see every year and that's how the Gr grinch stole christmas the original it's like, i think it's like 22 minutes or something like that or 20 minutes or whatever not the one with jim carrey the the original one it was uh it was originally a book written by dr seuss it was made into this uh animated movie and I just like love the movie um, for its story and for Grinch's like really growth as a character and how his heart grew three sizes that day, and then he got the power of ten Grinches plus two. It's just the and the movie that has so, I, does so well with its language and the song like "You Are a Mean One, Mr. Grinch." It was it was just really well done, and I really enjoy it every year. Every year I try to watch it at least once, maybe more. It is by far well. I do like Charlie Brown. I do like Charlie Brown's Christmas Tale, tale as well. But it's definitely one of my favorite Christmas specials of all time. And that is my number fifteen. How the Grinch Stole Christmas. My number fourteen is Kim Possible. Now this was a animated show by um, by Disney for a while. It lasted actually four seasons. It was a it, it really wasn't um, intended to last that long and you can kind of tell by the writing of the fourth season that they sort of grew uh, they sort of like lost ideas of what they were gonna do as it repeated some of the plots over and over again well not that bad they did add some new stuff and however the ending of Kim Possible with Ron stoppable having uh, uh, monkey kung fu powers or whatever they're called it was just really epic seeing his character grow throughout this the entire series and how he's like just this goof sidekick and then him and Kim actually start dating and then he actually becomes probably one of the most powerful people in that particular universe as he's able to uh, defeat these aliens that even uh, Kim and her, they even Kim uh, couldn't, couldn't was basically defeated and uh, he I, it was it was just a great ending to a great show overall I mean it was it had comedy it had action it was it was it was just great um, and that's my number 14 Kim possible my number 13 is how to train your dragon um, the uh, the original how to train your dragon 2 is actually going to be 
really actually uh, further down on the list here um, coming up pretty soon the first one though was was really well done you really focused on hiccups character and his character growth of um he really starts off as like a nobody and like um a weakling really and then he finds toothless and then he learns more about dragons and then he actually convinces his entire town that uh dragons are actually good by the end that they're not as mean as uh his entire village thinks they are so it was really good growth on his part and some of the um some of the really the mannerisms of toothless was really well animated really well displayed you you almost you, you almost get this feeling that you know what he's taught you, you know what uh, toothless is actually saying without him actually speaking words so that's really well an animation done um for uh for how to train your dragon and some of the songs were really good as well i mean this movie is definitely one that i sit down and watch sometimes um the plot though is and kind of the reason i like how to train your dragon 2 better is the plot of this one um it, you kind of after you know it once and if you've seen it a couple times like it's at that point that you just skip certain scenes because you're like uh eh, i know exactly what's going to happen however it was, it was it, it's still a great an amazing movie that i that i will um watch again and again and again and that's uh, my number 13 how to train your dragon my number 12 is one piece now one piece is a great anime and it has probably one of the best stories and kind of like the backstories of the characters the um the creator of uh one piece i believe his name is Oda or, Oda or something like that really takes his time and develops these characters with unique sad backstories and you actually sympathize with like even some of the bad guys of the story as well as kind of uh, 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 what they go through and everything and how they ended up where they are um in in wherever the story is at that particular time and you get to see luffy kind of grow and kind of uh, luffy's character is great he's uh he's very carefree but he's also very um very serious when it comes to like protecting his friends and 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 and, and those he cares about i i think it's uh one piece is definitely one it's definitely one of my favorite animes of all time and it's one that i have not seen every episode and there is a lot of episodes of one piece i've probably seen about 70 to 80 percent of them or something like that um i i do kind of skip around in this in the entire series because it's just there's just so many episodes it's, it's not that it's not that it's not that type of series that people like go and just be like oh i'm gonna rewatch this entire series no no it's it's you would it'd take you a long time to do that unless you like binge it for like a month or something like that straight um, that being said, uh, One Piece is definitely a show that you can still pick up in, like, even, like, e even, like, just, um, you can just, like, pick up one of the, at the beginning of one arc and watch that arc all the way through, and it's still, like, very well enjoyable, even if you don't know, kind of, the past, but, but if you know the past, you kind of know where stuff is going through, because there's, there's hidden stuff the creator puts in that prepares it for later on since he has everything planned out so everything's like interlocking but it's separated into these arcs so it, it's a it's a, a really well done series and that is my what is it number uh, number 12 one piece my number 11 is dragon ball z this just missed my top 10 and uh honestly it it, it might make it into the top 10 i'm, I'm not sure as my it's kind of what I like and what I don't like it changes over time you know but Dragon Ball Z was one of those shows I used to watch every week sometimes even every day when I was growing up in the 90s it was just the anime that got the U the United States kids into anime it's one of them Sailor Moon was the other one but for me it was definitely Dragon Ball Z it was like that show you got to see it's basically two strong people just going at it and goku uh really reaching his limit against whatever that bad guy is and going beyond that some of the my favorite parts in that entire series was early on the saiyan saga the fight against vegeta goku krillin gohan yajirobe versus vegeta they all played their part and then of course the big epic fight against frieza where goku finally transforms into a super saiyan it was just a great 
those those um, so the Saiyan and then the Nappa the, the Namek slash Frieza arcs are my definitely my favorite. After that, it does it to me. It's not as good, but it's still very well enjoyable. So that's my number eleven, Dragon Ball Z. My number ten is All Grown Up. Yeah, I, I, I guess people would probably figure it would be in my top 10 somewhere or somewhere on this top 100 list for sure. All Grown Up is just an amazing show where the characters to me, I just really like relate, not necessarily relate to them, but I really like the characters from Rugrats, see them kind of grow up here and all grown up and kind of see them develop, particularly like Angelica and Chucky's character. And I really, really, really like Kimmy's character, of course, as I've said before. I've said so much about All Grown Up, um, I've probably exhausted the subject at this point. It is uh, one of my favorite shows of all time, and it's one of those shows that, since it's like a comedy, I can always like come back to and just kind of relax watching. There's other shows that it's really hard to watch like more than once because it's you lose that suspense, that that suspense like kind of feeling, um, like dramas and that kind of stuff. However, this show's comedy and it's always enjoyable. And that's my number 10, All Grown Up. My number nine is Star Wars The Clone Wars. I really like the action of this show and um, I, I really like the characters. It was good to see Anakin actually kind of at his prime as a, like a Jedi a knight, if you will. And it's really good to see Obi-Wan Kenobi as well um, like that. And Ahsoka is my favorite Star Wars character. And it was good to see her kind of grow up under the uh, being a student of Anakin Skywalker who later becomes Darth Vader. And not only that, but the story arcs are actually um, pretty well done as well. Um, one of my favorite story arcs is uh, the end of season five where Ahsoka's um, goes on trial for murder and just like her like some of the best fighting choreography um in this show like in in my opinion was her her escaping and her deflecting um the uh, uh the uh, uh, all the blasts from the sto um not the stormtroopers but the clones and everything her escape scene was just some in my opinion one of the one of my favorite fighting choreography scenes of in all of the fiction if you will, of all all of animation and um it, it was just a really well done scene and like star wars in itself has a um, some amazing lightsaber fights like star wars the clone wars i mean of course and some of my favorite uh, st uh lightsaber fights of all star wars happens in this show so i really like the fighting choreography the action all that stuff. Uh, that's why it's my number nine, Star Wars The Clone Wars. My number eight is Avatar The Last Airbender. Now I remember watching this in the early 2000s and at first I was like, it's one of those shows I was like, oh, I'm not, not going to like this show. I think one of the first episodes I watched was um, The Blue Spirit. It, I think it was like the second or third, but once I saw that episode it was like, this show is going to be awesome. And it really was. I mean, Zuko is one of the um, what most well-developed character whose growth throughout the entire series is and what it's 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 really well done Zuko's character is really well done I mean some of the other characters are okay and everything however like they did Zuko's character a ton of justice and Zulu was pretty well done too I mean Aang was okay uh, but the whole like series plot of the, them like fighting this war throughout the entire series it was just well. It was just really well done. I mean, th there are some things about Aang being like a child and that kind of stuff. It was there. There are some things in the show that I didn't like. However, um, the, the stuff I do like really makes up for it. And it has some really good fighting choreography too, with the uh, bending of the elements and stuff. Um, uh, they could have done it more, but some of my fa some of my favorite episodes are in like the second season, uh, particularly the, like the middle, um, the desert and the library. I really liked. And I really liked um, Crossroads of Destiny and like uh, the episode right before that as well. Uh, some uh, some of the, my favorite um, my favorite parts of that entire series is in season two. That's my number eight, Avatar: The Last Airbender. My number seven is Once Upon a Forest. Now this movie really defined my childhood, so it has a lot of nostalgic value to it. And really, um, 
I, I'm definitely going to have to rewatch this to confirm this, but I remember it being such a great movie and in the terms of these kids like go out on an adventure to really save their friend from an illness. And um, so the motivation is really good. And then they grow as characters throughout the, throughout the uh, journey. They really start out very naive and uh, they kind of grow and kind of learn throughout this journey that they go on to uh, in order to get medicine to save their friend. Now, I really enjoyed this movie growing up as a kid. It's kind of defined my childhood. It was like way back when I was like early elementary school, that kind of thing. And it was, yeah, I just love this movie. I used to watch it over and over and over again. And uh, that's my number seven, Once Upon a Forest. My number six is Teen Titans. Teen Titans was a great action show um, of the early 2000s, late 90s. Maybe it was just early 2000s that I can't really remember. However, if you don't know anything about Teen Titans, they are DC. So the, it was like some of the some of the main characters were Robin, Beast Boy, Starfire, Raven, and Cyber Cyborg. And Terra was in it like for a season or whatever as well. Slade uh, or really Deathstroke was the main villain throughout the entire series but they also had like Terra's father Trigon and Brother Blood as well I thought the show did a really good balance between action and comedy and they kinda had these uh, story arcs throughout the season if you will but it was a very episodic show I, th I think they mixed it pretty well I would rather have them um, more like Young Justice where it was like more it was more closely knit together each episode instead of like this one is very um it's very episodic and sometimes episodes don't even relate to the main story plot that being said it was still a great show and that was my number six teen titans speaking of young justice that is my number five young justice now this show uh, took teen titans and it took it really to a darker level there was still some comedy in there um, but it was more serious. It had a more serious tone to it. And the story plot, especially in like season two, really in a grove with the, it was really interwove with each other. It was really one big um, season instead of like very episodic parts of it. So it was I like I really like that whole story plot with um, the lights and everything like that they did in season one. But to me, season two was uh, actually a lot better because it was less episodic. And more focused on like this whole big huge like kind of war that's in the horizon come uh, um, uh, going to happen and how the team is there to actually the young justice team is there to kind of try to prevent this huge war from happening so uh, th uh, that's my number what are we on five young justice my number four is how to train your dragon 2 I didn't think they could do it I didn't think uh, How to Train Your Dragon 2 would be better than the first one, but it was in so many different ways. First you had like a main character dying out of nowhere. I mean it wasn't completely out of nowhere and I guess I should have seen it coming, but I personally did not see it coming. I didn't see any spoilers or anything like that. So Toothless killing um, Hiccup's dad, that was a very epic scene. And you had the mother returning which was alright, kind of some of the weaker parts of the entire movie. Um, however, um, his kind of bond with his mother and how they're kind of like alike, if you will, but not really alike, how Hiccup actually teaches her, but Hiccup actually learns how to be a chief in this, in this, uh, in this movie as well. So you take Hiccup from last season and, he, and how he's grown uh, to have like the respect of his father and stuff. And now he has to grow from this uh, person who's very optimistic and thinks like everyone can change, if you will, to a person that's uh, a chief to lead his village. He becomes a leader and he has to think about his village first. It's mentioned by his mom and his dad. And he ends up learning this lesson at the end. And then Toothless has like an epic scene at the end where he, he ends up being the uh, king of all dragons, if you will. And I actually have a theory on like Toothless... Uh, as well um well really the night fury how they were really the kings of all dragons before but um well that, that will probably reveal in how to train your dragon 3. Uh, this movie was really well done i mean the villain was all right but you kind of needed a villain like him that was very unredeemable 
to uh, really contradict between Toothless thought, I mean, not, not Toothless, uh, Hiccup thought everyone was redeemable. And what he did, like he made Toothless like kill his like, fa like father, was just like, well, it was going to kill him, but it, it ended up killing his father. And it was just like, it was very sad and very like epic villain for, and very epic antagonist for Hiccup, if you will. So that's my number four, How to Train Your Dragon 2. My number three is Hey Arnold, which is kind of why we would be doing reviews of every episode because it's my third favorite cartoon work of animation of all time. This show was amazing in the 90s and it took Arnold, who really is a paradigm character. He's like above everyone else and it's not really about him, even though the show is named him. I mean, he has some course to work out with Helga, if you will, like he doesn't really understand girls. However, like his main role is actually to motivate the growth of other characters, which is kind of how you define a paradigm character, if you will. Their role is to kind of help out the other characters, if you, if you will. And that's what he does throughout the entire series. He does some like amazing things and he like never gives up and all this stuff. But in the end, it's not really about him. It's about the change he makes to other characters. And that's what makes the show so great. The other characters have their own faults and he helps them with those faults no matter who they are. And that's, that's the show like round up and like just a quick and easy explanation. The other side of it is you got Helga, very, very well developed character. I mean, she, could be technically described as the protagonist of the, of the entire series and how she likes Arnold and stuff like that. And her episodes are always very funny. They do follow kind of the same sort of plot of her not wanting Arnold to know her true feelings, but it's done differently each time and it's done really funny each time. So uh, that's my number three, Hey Arnold. My number two is my favorite animated movie of all time. Well, I say all time, but right now. And that's Wrecker Ralph. I love Wreck-It Ralph because I relate to Ralph and Vanellope's characters, especially at the time and when it came out. Like at that time in my life, it was I was very much a loner and very much not. I didn't really have that many people in my life and stuff, and I felt I felt kind of like left out, if you will. And that's exactly how Vanellope and Ralph feel: is that they're like loner type characters, and they kind of just want a place of their own to belong. So I really res resonated with them. And not only that, but this, this movie is actually done really well with the, like Ralph's character development as well. Uh, he's still true to himself, but he becomes he becomes what he wanted to become at the beginning by, by, real, by, be, by re really just being himself. And it was just really, it was just really well done in my opinion. Uh, it's a movie that I'm definitely going to, I've seen so many times, I'm going to see it again and again and again. It will never get old. Um, the villain was uh, uh, done pretty good in his uh, kind of foreshadowing as well. Mr. K Candy, or King Candy, whatever his name is, and then he, he's actually really terrible. I, I'm, I, I, that was kind of a nice twist like the first time I saw it, even though I should have seen it coming, really. I kind of did, actually, if I remember right. Then you have like Vanellope's character who starts off as like a brat, like very annoying character. But then you just end up feeling sorry for her. And this is one of the few movies that there's a scene at the end of the movie um, dealing dealing with Ralph really finally understanding that his job of the villain is actually being important. This movie has like so many different things because uh, there's so many people out there who have jobs that they hate and they don't think is important and stuff like that, but it actually is important. And they're important uh, not just because of their job but but because of who they are and stuff like that so th this movie has so many deep concepts to it and I'll probably make a video on it like detailing it out uh, out uh, if you will but this is just kind of overview anyway uh, that's my number two Wreck-It Ralph my number one is Ruby of course it's Ruby it's my by far my favorite show, which is why I make videos on Ruby um, on this channel. It is just an amazing show. It has great fighting choreography. The story is amazing. The character development and character growth is amazing. Um, the animation has improved greatly since the, since the beginning. It was just 
the show and it has like this story this series long plot to it which is something i really wanted like there's so many shows that do this episodic thing and and some people actually get mad at ruby for doing for not doing episodic um and ep being an episodic show if you will no this move this this show is actually meant to be watched in volumes whole volumes that are as like longer movies if you will and and like if you look at it like the first three volumes are really one big arc if you will and then volume four and volume five are like one big arc as well like so there's like they, and they got all these pieces coming together to fit in this huge series if you will series long plot it sort of reminds me of one piece in in, in, in one piece's structure of how it's set up like that's kind of how ruby set up in a lot of ways they prepare stuff early on like like a ruby having silver eyes and and like jean having a big aura and stuff like that like a large amount of aura uh, for something that's coming out in the future and then they prepare stuff for um like in season four they were really developing yang's character and now in season five um they kind of they didn't finish yang's plot but they finished it for the time being season four they also started to develop weiss's character for the next arc which is the atlas arc it's just like it's an amazing like how many little nit pits like go on and how many foreshadowing goes on in this series it's well very well planned out from like the beginning to end um so many different plots mixed up i mean of course it's not like i'm not saying it's a perfect show but for me it is just an amazing show and it has like john and cinder's fight like basically two like very opposite characters fighting against each other it was one of my favorite fights in all like in all of fiction if you will and, and it wasn't even like it wasn't even like this spectacular fight like you know a lot of like 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 in dragon ball z you got two characters going at it like at really size speeds really like jean was completely out of his class but it was just the way the fight was there was so much emotion to it so much like drama and it has f good funny choreography on top of that i mean i could go on and on about this show but that's that's why it's my number one ruby is my number one uh work of animation so that's my top 100 uh works of animation uh now that i think about it, i probably shouldn't have done 100 this last 20 were so good maybe i should have done like the top 20 but i felt like there were so many shows that i would have left so many shows and movies and anime that i would have left off if i would have done that which it which is why I did a top 100 because I didn't want to leave like anything out that I really liked and I'm sure I forgot stuff and I'm sure there'll be stuff in the future that I watch that I really like as well that being said this top 20 is like obviously I'm really passionate about and particularly like the top like five and like you know the top 10 and the top five and this really this last like three or four or whatever it was like I really got into like this was definitely these are definitely my favorite as of right now for sure anyway so um I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoyed the video and like the uh, the rest of the top hunter as well uh, thanks for watching and um, and I put in like to, uh, the list of maybe your like top 10 or whatever as well like works of animation in the uh, in the comments and stuff I, and I, I, I really do enjoy hearing like um, new stuff that maybe I can watch as well or other people can watch which is kind of the point of this whole list is for um, people get introduced to something maybe they never seen before maybe you never seen like Ruby or maybe you never heard of some of these like like Land Before Time or Brave Little Toaster or something like that and maybe that sounded interesting to you and you can go up and like watch it and have a good time or something like that so anyway that was kind of the point of this entire list um, Thanks for watching. Hope you see you in the next one. Catch you later. Bye.